Hello, everybody. I'm not sure if I'm slightly early, uh, so I'll just wait a few seconds for um, to get to the top of the hour before um, we start discussing things or whatever. Um, yeah, where we go. It's four o'clock. When I was a kid, we used to have it's um, five o'clock. It's Friday. It used to be Cracker Jack time. I suppose a lot of you are probably far too young to remember that or indeed are not British and therefore don't remember such nonsense. Um, just making uh, this is going to be around about a 10 or 15 minute chat really or presentation and I'm just interested in telling you guys a little bit about um, some breaking news and things that I'm going to be involved in in the next few days I suppose the major piece of breaking news um, that I only announced this afternoon because I only heard about it this afternoon um, was that um, I do actually have a new book deal um, so this will be my 14th book um, effectively my 14th book I I co-authored one book with Irvin Laszlo a few years ago, and I also edited or co-edited a book um, a few years ago as well. And the subject matter will be near-death experiences. Um, this was at the suggestion of my publisher, Arcturus, rather than my own idea. Um, but I agree with them. There is much need for a book on near-death experiences taking my approach to the subject. And as, you, as many of you will know, um, I did submit an essay to the... Um, the Bix competition, um, the Bigelow competition um, two years ago, and unfortunately I was not selected or even shortlisted, which is rather sad. So this is my opportunity to put that right, if I can. Um, I'll be breaking, more, I'll be discussing more news about this in due course, but at the moment I'm quite excited about it. The book won't be out until uh, 2020, 2024, um, probably the middle of the year, but um, it's an exciting new project to be involved in. But the reason I want to chat at the moment is that um, to let everybody be aware of the fact that um, on um, April the 27th, which is um, Thursday, April the 27th at 3 p.m., which is an hour before we've just gone live now, uh, we'll be doing um, a live um, in, con uh, in conversation consciousness hour. And my two guests will be Dr. Andrew Gallimore and Jim Elvidge. Now, many of you will, will know both Andrew and Jim. Uh, Andrew has been a previous guest on Consciousness Hour and Incon. And Jim, I think, has been two or three times has been a previous guest on the show. And the reason why I'm wanting to invite these two fascinating guys um, to a, a general discussion is that all three of us will be appearing at um, the Contact in the Desert event at Indian Wells in California um, uh, at the beginning of June of this year. And all three of us will be involved in various um, events and everything else as well. We're all doing lectures, we're all involved in panels. And indeed, both Jim and I and Andrew and I will be on different panels discussing various um, aspects of the holographic universe for want of a better term, or what Andrew quite accurately calls the instantation. So what we're going to be doing is discussing and telling you all a little bit about what we're planning to do at the event and also to look out for us if you're going to the event, because um, I will, for instance, um, for most of Saturday at the event, I'll be free and available to chat to people and meet up with people if we want. Um, just to let you know a little bit about Contact in the Desert as well. Some of you will recall that I was invited to speak at Contact in the Desert um, two years ago. Um, oh, three years ago, actually, 2020. And of course, COVID hit then. Um, and unfortunately, we couldn't go in 2020. But in 2021, um, there was an, uh, an attempt to do the event virtually, um, which was to a degree successful, I guess. But it didn't really work in the same way because people like the interaction. And I know that Contact in the Desert has been around for many years now. Um, in fact, it's quite I find it quite intriguing that my my sister and her, my brother in law have been going to it for years and I wasn't aware of it. Um, but it'll be taking place um, from uh, Thursday, the uh, 1st of June until Monday, the 5th of June. Uh, and I'll be flying in from uh, the UK. And in fact, that's one of the reasons we have a very specific timing for the event on the 27th, which will be going out on this channel, because Andrew is based in Okinawa in, uh, in Japan, an island off Japan, south of Japan, and Jim lives in Los Angeles. So of course the timings had to be correct. And it sort of works to my advantage because of course for me, it means three o'clock is no problem at all. Whereas for Jim, it's um, 
a very early start, for Andrew, a very late start, but we're very, very keen to be talking about this. But the Contact with the Desert event will be taking place at the Renaissance Esmeralda Resort and Spa in Indian Wells. Um, and it is a big event. I know that thousands of people turn up for this, and it's one of the, the big annual events in terms of the people who are interested in UFO phenomenon. Now, myself, Andrew and Jim take a probably slightly different approach to the phenomenon of um, UFOs and alien encounters. Um, because all three of us are very interested in the, the, the phenomenological and the, the, the psychological aspects of, of UFO encounters and what these may be telling us about the true nature of reality. And all three of us have, it's almost like a Venn diagram. We all are coming from slightly different points of view. I mean, Andrew's very much coming from the neurology um, and Jim's coming from, again, the, the digital idea, and I'm coming from the holographic universe model. But effectively, in the middle of the Venn diagram, we all agree um, that there is something very interesting about reality and that we are somewhat misunderstanding the interface between what is consciousness and what is external reality. And um, what we'll be doing is we'll be discussing this in, in great detail at the event. And of course, this is going to come as maybe as a surprise to some of the people the event, maybe not. Um, it's very difficult to say, because I know that uh, A.V. Loeb, on, um, the Harvard uh, physicist, astrophysicist, will be speaking at the event as well. So just to let you know what I'll be doing at the event, um, and I will be uh, arriving on the Thursday, Thursday afternoon come evening, um, flying in from London. And on the Friday, Friday at five past um, 11 in the morning, um, I'll be doing my lecture on my egregor the egregorial hypothesis. And many of you who have read my book, the tw my 2019 book, The Hidden Universe, will know that I built a very, very precise picture and about what I believe was taking place when people have encounters with non-human intelligences. And this I'll be expanding upon. And of course, it relates directly to the UFO phenomenon in many, many ways. Well, especially the alien encounter elements of the UFO phenomenon. So I'll be talking about that. Um, and then on Saturday, June the 3rd, um, at a very early start at 8.30 till 10.15, um, I'm going to be involved in a panel. And that panel will be uh, chaired by a guy called Alan Steinfield. And what we're going to be discussing or open to discussion on is remote viewing. Now, remote viewing is um, an area I had written about uh, in my book, The Outer Body Experience, and touched upon remote viewing. But it's an area that interests me in the suggestion that consciousness is non-local and that consciousness can gain information um, from a distance. And indeed, I'll be citing a couple of examples of people I know who have brought back information that is extraordinary under these circumstances. Um, it's going to be an interesting chat and an interesting panel, that one. Then um, I then have the rest of the day, which I'm free. Um, so I'll be um, wandering around the, the location. And funnily enough, I was deciding earlier on today as to what which ones and which um, lectures and things I'll be going to. And I think I'm probably planning to go to the workshop with Dr. Russell Targ, who I've been a huge fan of for many, many years. Um, and he's doing a workshop at 14.50 to quarter past two on Friday, and I'll go to that. Then on Saturday, um, my I will be going to Andrew's lecture on uh, molecular and post-molecular technologies for communication and advanced bi post-biological intelligences, which is, again, very up my tree in terms of the, the stuff I'm interested in. And then my plan is then at two o'clock to go to the Graham Hancock lecture. Um, I've been interested in Graham Hancock's work, not necessarily his archaeological work. Um, I haven't read a great deal of that. But what I am interested in is uh, the, uh, the arguments he used in his, in his book, Supernature, um, about the role of entheogens and psychedelia and ayahuasca and DMT. Um, and again, I have a very similar approach to Graham on this. And of course, many of you will know that around about 12, 13 years ago, I was um, author of the month on Graham's website. Uh, Graham and I have done one event together beforehand. We, we did an event called uh, Weird. Um, in uh, Swindon, 
probably about 10 or 11 years ago. Um, and also, uh, I'm hoping to meet up with Graham um, next weekend, or this coming weekend, actually, now, um, when Graham will be speaking at Breaking Convention at the University of Exeter, an event that, that I have spoken at in the past and I'll be uh, attending this year as well. Um, so that's my plan then. And on Sunday, it's going to be quite a busy day for me in that um, uh, from 10.35 to 12.20, um, I have a workshop where I'll be discussing the daemon. Now, it's something I've always wanted to do this, to actually do a workshop on the daemon and how we communicate with the daemon. And it's something that people have asked me to do for many, many years. So I'll be doing one or two techniques of maybe being able to open up the channels of communication between the daemon and the Eidolon. And again, if anybody's interested and wants to get it, uh, in advance of this, if you check out my book, The Daemon, and indeed my subsequent book, Opening the Doors of Perception, uh, where I posit what I call the Huxleyan spectrum, um, you'll get some kind of idea of where I'm coming from this. I'm also have an idea about working with a couple of associates of mine in trying to develop ways to open up the doors of perception and the channels of communication. So that will be then, as I said, that will be at 10.35 to 12.20. Um, I will then be at two o'clock. Um, I'll then be on a panel uh, on non-human intelligences. And again, that's going to be quite an interesting one um, in that both Andrew Gallimore and myself and Jim Elvidge are all involved in that one. So that's going to be very much a reflection of what we're going to be discussing on the 27th. Um, so, again, very, very intriguing that we've also got somebody called uh, Adam Curry involved. Uh, Jason Martell will be hosting that one. So there's a number of us involved in that one. Then um, later on that day, because I'm reading this on another screen, by the way, if you're wondering why I keep looking up and looking strangely and looking happily up my nose, um, I will then be attending Andrew's workshop, which will be at uh, five past uh, four to um, ten to six. And I'll be attending that as well. And then um, at uh, 20 to eight that evening, um, I'm involved in a panel on consciousness, which Graham Hancock himself will be chairing. Um, and again, there'll be Adam Apollo, there'll be Caroline Corey, there'll be Andrew Gallimore, um, Jim Elvidge, Paul Hynek, uh, JJ and Desiree Hurtak and Jeffrey Long, um, the writer on um, near-death experiences. So again, that's going to be a fascinating discussion. And I'm a huge admirer of a number of individuals that are involved in that workshop. So that's going to be really, really fascinating. And then finally, um, on the Monday, for those of you who will be staying over, you probably are aware that the um, on Monday there are a series of um, intensives and intensives and more in-depth discussions um, and presentations by, uh, I think there's about five or six speakers that will be doing presentations um, and intensives within within the hotel and I'll be doing one of them um, and I will be my my intensive will start at quarter to five on the Monday and will finish at 1945 and my intention though with this intensive is to do something I've never really attempted before but I really again have really wanted to do and it's to try and attempt to explain why people believe that the universe is digital in nature the role of quantum mechanics and quantum physics, and also the cosmology of black holes and information theory. Now, I'm giving myself a really big task to do in this, but what I'm hoping to do is the delegates who choose to go along to that, I will guarantee that by the end of it, you will have a fairly good understanding of why the argument is that nature is digital or mathematical in nature. I'm planning to take, take the guys through right from the start of quantum mechanics and quantum physics, exactly why from when Max Planck stood up in December um, of 1900 and made his famous speech at um, the uh, in Berlin and what it was he was trying to prove, what we mean by quantum mechanics and why quantum mechanics are so peculiar and so strange. Um, I will try to explain things like non-locality and various other things as well. Whether I will succeed is a matter of other people to judge. And also it'd be a matter of other people to judge whether I'm way off key in terms of my interpretation of these things. But that's what I'm here to do. You know, if people want 
feel that I'm not quite right on these things, that's fine. And I'm happy to be corrected. So the, the event is going to be fairly exciting, very different and very interesting. Um, it's the I will post on here um, when when it's put up properly. Um, when I when I put the recording up, I'll put up the full details of how you can get involved and join. Now, I'm also hoping um, that I will be allowed to um, do some one or two interesting things while I'm there. Like what is exciting news is that the the distributor for the Lucia, the hypnagogic light device uh, for the USA, um, Allison, will be traveling over from Colorado and bringing at least one hypnagogic light device with her. And I've helped, I've helped and assisted with this, and they will have a room in the hotel where there will be a Lucia device, a hypnagogic light device for delegates and attendees to the conference to test this machine out. Now, it is then my intention, if, if Alison is available to do this, whereby at least with my Damon court talk and possibly with my quantum physics talk as well, that we will have a Lucia with us. Um, when we're doing that as well. Now, this is really exciting because, as many of you know, I've written extensively in at least three books uh, my own encounters with this extraordinary device. Now, there are other devices on the market that are similar, but in my opinion, this is the only one that has been designed in the way it has by a consultant neurologist and a, co a consultant psychologist. So effectively, you know, that everybody else seems to be mimicking this machine. But this machine is genuinely designed by people who know what they're doing and know what they're trying to do as well. So if you can get along to that, that's really good. I'm also hoping that um, there'll be a number of friends of mine who will be involved in the event and may be involved in my, my talks as well. For instance, I'm really hoping that my great friend Myron Dial will be joining us. Myron lives in L.A. And many of you will know that Myron is somebody who manifests virtually every aspect of my Damon Adelon dyad. Um, and he's living evidence of my, my arguments that experiences of temporal lobe epilepsy, um, their doors of perception are wide open uh, and open to demonic communication. Um, and again, if you want to check back on my previous interviews, you will know that I've interviewed Myron on a number of occasions as well. I'm also hoping to take the opportunity to interview one or two of, of my fellow delegates as well while I'm at the event. So fingers crossed on that. My, I have a similar plan as well when I'm at a breaking convention at the University of Exeter um, next this coming weekend, where again, I'm hoping to maybe catch some interviews with um, one, or two, uh, one or two delegates there, particularly because, you know, I love that event and we have some great times there. And the last time we did it was 2019 and we had a wonderful time. So I'm hoping that uh, I'll be able to do everything else in the same way as I've done in the past. Um, I think that's about it for now. Um, all I'd like to say is um, thanks for listening in. Um, this will be posted um, on my uh, YouTube channel for further viewing uh, later on today or early tomorrow. Um, but please, again, check out. And if you are based in the United States or Canada or North America and you can get to the event, it would be lovely to see you there. Um, I really genuinely believe that myself, Andrew and Jim will be able to contribute something extraordinary to the event. So thank you very much for listening in, everybody. And thank you again. OK.